The jaws of life begin with the milling machine that shapes the spreader arms from a bar of solid aircraft grade aluminum. The spreader arms then get a protective coating. A lathe now makes the cap that fits on the end of the tool. A high-speed carbide tip shapes the solid aluminum into a finished end cap that is then drilled and treated to a coat of rust-resistant protection. Arms that both cut and spread are made from tool steel. A surface grinder ensures that the two arms are perfectly flat. A worker installs a seal that prevents the hydraulic fluid from leaking out of the cylinder. He attaches a link assembly to the piston and secures it in place. The link assembly relays power to the cutting blades or spreader arms. He then attaches an assembled end cap to the cylinder and bolts it in place. He connects the two hoses that lead to the tool's hydraulic cylinder. He puts on a hand grip that protects the hoses and makes it easier to work the thumb wheel. He tightens the bolts and completes the control valve. He then attaches the front handle that allows the operator to hold the tool safely. This protective guard will keep all the moving components away from a rescuer's hands. Then he aligns the holes in the blades to the tool and inserts a steel pivot pin. After mounting the blades, he secures them to the link assembly with a steel alloy pin and a snap ring. Then he folds the protective guard back and finishes assembling the tool. Whether it's a rescue tool that cuts through metal or pries it open, emergency response teams arriving on an accident scene will have what it takes to help save lives.